Welcome to Wednesday night prayer service, Bible study, Bible trivia, and a little interview on the side. We're excited to have Mike and Kathy Glander with us tonight. They're just a wonderful couple that's in our congregation and other ones that we'd like to get to know a little bit more tonight, as well as get to know some of the programs that Mike is over and, and some of his background. We are excited that you're here with us. We're thankful that the Lord's led you here. And we're going to pray that the Lord blesses you throughout this evening. Now, I want to just uh, let you know that my name is Donald Curtis. Of course, this is my wife, Denise, and we're the pastors of uh, Moraine City First Church of God, and we want to welcome you uh, with all of our heart. What I want to let you know, though, is if you're watching by Facebook tonight, we're going to do at least three Bible trivia questions, three Bible trivia questions. Now, the beautiful part about that is we've got three really nice gifts this evening. Uh, two CDs. Uh, it's the, the Royer Brothers is one CD. Jeff and Sherry Easter CD. And then, I don't know if you all like it or not, but there's Esther Price chocolates up for grabs on the third question this evening. That's the grand prize, I guess you'd say. But we want to welcome each and every one of you. We see a bunch of it uh, getting online. Um, and I just too many, many numbers, or too many names rather, to, to name everybody. So we'll just say hello to everybody. How's that? And we want you to just stick with us. Watch throughout the program. I'm sure you'll be blessed by it. We're going to do some Bible study and things. We want to just go to the Lord in prayer first to get everything started. And we have a special prayer request. Uh, Sister Andrea Hale's in the hospital. Uh, she's had some issues with her kidneys and the dialysis and the, all that kind of thing. But then she had a fall today, and she's hurt herself pretty badly. So we just ask you to keep Andrea Hale in your prayers. And as I say that, I want you to just know, if you've got a prayer request and you'd like to let us know, just make sure you message it on either on Facebook or YouTube. We're monitoring Facebook live, okay? So I'm trying to keep an eye on Facebook so that we keep an eye on you. And when you put up a, a comment or something, other, we're going to be watching. Uh, if you've got a prayer request, please let us know, and we will definitely be praying. If you've got a question for Mike or Kathy or even for our, us, then you make sure you let us know that as well. We want to know, here's what we'd love to know, is who you are that you're watching and where you're from. This kind of gives us a good uh, idea of the demographics that we're reaching. And so it would just bless us a lot to hear from you. So if you've got anything you'd like to share, maybe a comment, maybe something you want to praise or a verse that, you, that comes to your mind as we do our Bible study, we want this to be an interactive session. So please make sure you're a part of that and, uh, you know, because it's the Lord's house. Even though, unfortunately, we can't be together right now uh, in face-to-face we can be together in our hearts and our spirits. And that's why Amen. we're here this evening. So let's start with a word of prayer. I'm going to ask Sister Kathy Glander if she don't mind leading us in prayer, please. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you give us each day. We thank you for allowing us to live another day. Uh, we pray that you would be with this country right now as we're going through uh, these awful times. But we know that you're in control, and all we have to do is put yes. our faith and trust in you. We pray that you would uh, touch Andrea in a special way today Amen. and heal her body and let her feel your presence and know that you are with her and that you love her, Lord. We thank you again for all the blessings you give us and keeping us safe. And um, bless the service here tonight, dear Lord, and may everything done, uh, be done according to your will. And we thank you once again. We ask it in your precious name. Amen. 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 So we're thankful to have Sister, uh, Sister Kathy and Brother Mike Glander with us. Um, they've been a car part of our congregation for a lot longer than I've been here, at least. Uh, how long have you been going to Moraine? Actually, about a year and a half before you came. So about three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, not too long after before I came. And so the Lord worked. brought you. We're going to get to why you got here and who <laughs> brought you here and all that, how God brought you here. But uh, let's start with our Bible study, if you don't mind. Great. Well, let me back up. Let's start with a, a, uh, a Bible trivia, because there's three of them, and I want to kind of space them out this evening. Uh, so let me get your Bible trivia. If you're watching already, uh, we're about 
five minutes into it. You should have been watching by now, I hope. Um, <laughs> we've got quite a few people watching. So I'm going to start with our first Bible trivia. This Bible trivia is going to be for the Royer Brothers. Uh, it's Worth It All CD. And they've got some amazing songs on the back. I think you'll really be blessed by it. The question for this Royer Brothers is, Jesus healed the mother-in-law of which apostle? Jesus healed the mother-in-law of which apostle? Okay, that's the, that's the question for that CD. <clears throat> Let me pull this back up and we'll start a Bible study. If you don't mind, turn your Bibles this evening. Uh, I've asked them to, what uh, Bible verse they would like, and we were talked about Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. All right? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto, the, unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge <clears throat> him, and he shall direct my paths, or thy paths. So you pick this verse, what makes this special to you? You want to go first? Well, <clears throat> my dad has always quoted this verse. And even after he got dementia, um, there was a lot of things he couldn't remember, but he could still always remember this verse. And uh, anytime any had, anybody had any doubts or said anything negative, he'd say, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And he'd go through the whole thing every time. And I'd read it all my life. I'd heard it all my life. But one day it just, you know how you'll read the word over and over, and then one day it'll just pop out at you. Amen. Yeah. And he... he the living word. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I discovered... You, you can't lean into yourself or your own understanding. You have to totally rely on God. Mm -hmm. And if you ask him and you listen to his small, still voice, he will direct your path. Amen. That's the truth. And, and we've seen that happen time and time again, haven't we? Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to overlook this and apologize. We're going to break in just a little bit. But Patty Powers, and they've been asking prayer for uh, David and Tammy Fisk for uh, a little while now. I want you to please remember... Um, David and Tammy Fisk. Uh, David has cancer, and today the doctor put him into the hospice. He's in very bad condition. Uh, let's just stop real quick, and just we're going to have prayer uh, for him, if you don't mind. But Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, and Lord, we are so grateful that we are able to just we'll call upon your name, and, and Lord, you always hear us. And not only hear, but God, you're able to do all things. There's nothing too hard for you, nothing too difficult, nothing too strenuous. God, you're able to do everything with just a spoken word. You've created the whole universe and everything in it with a word, Lord. And, and so cancer or, or some kind of physical ailment of any kind, Lord, is nothing, nothing too hard for you. So, Lord, this evening we're asking in the precious name of Jesus to come down and move on David and and Tammy, God, we know that you're able. We know that you're compassionate. We know that you love them. And Father, we're asking in the precious name of Jesus to move in a miraculous way. Touch their bodies. Touch them, Father, emotionally and help them psychologically. Help them, Father, in their spirit to be encouraged and strengthened. Even though they're going through the most difficult time that they can imagine, Lord, give them the peace that passes understanding. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing and going to do in their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. And so let's, so we're getting back to this verse, uh, Proverbs 3 and 5 and 6, and it, it says, trust in the Lord. And surface, that sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? Well, we all can trust in the Lord. I mean, he's the Lord. But you know what's the difficult about trusting the Lord is what we just prayed about. Yes. And when they're going through something that we don't know what's going to happen, or we do know and we don't like the outcome. When we've got a loved one in the nursing home mm -hmm. and we don't understand their situation and we don't understand what the what good coming out of it sometimes that's sometimes when most people you know their trust is a little bit shaken and we can say mm. I trust mm. but boy trust I believe if I if my son and I use this example if my son's on a ledge 
and I'll say, son, jump, I'll catch you. He can say, I trust you, Dad, and then walk the other way. <laughs> or he can say, I can trust you, and he jumps. Mm -hmm. We say we trust too many times, and we walk the other way. Don't, don't you feel that's true? Mm -hmm. And we're all guilty of that at one time in our life. You know, sometimes our faith is not as strong as it ought to be, and, and we're going through issues that we don't understand. It's very difficult. And sometimes we say, I trust you, Lord, I trust you, Lord, but we're worried to death the whole time. We're fretting, we're, we're nervous, we're ex excited about it. We just don't know, we can't even hardly sleep because we're stressed out over whatever that situation is. Some of you right now may be having marital problems, mm -hmm. and you say, Lord, I trust you, but you're scared to death, you're worried to death, you're, you're always trying to figure out a plan to make it work. Mm -hmm. But what you need to do is jump. <laughs> a leap of faith. It's a leap of faith. That's right. You've got to jump. Not just jump into the ground. That's, that's gravity. You're not, you're not trying to defy the laws of, of gravity. You're trying to defy, defy the laws of what the world's telling you. It's impossible. When God says all things are possible through him that believeth in, in Jesus, mm -hmm. we've got to trust in Jesus and say, okay, God, I'm going to jump. Now, where am I going to jump to? I'm going to jump in the, in the arms of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Lord, I can't do anything about this, but I know that you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Mike, what, what, I know you've got some thoughts. Go ahead and share with us. Uh, well, you know, I was thinking um, the current event that everyone is caught up in with our being quarantined, not be able to attend church and worship together Amen. Uh, in the corporate body. This is a new, this is a new experience for all of us. Yes. I don't think there's any of us living today uh, who can recall what happened the last time this a pandemic hit the world in the 1918. Right. At the, at it's the, a little bit before my time. At the end of World <laughs> War I, uh, yeah. the pandemic had, had already taken place, but the war was coming to an end, and people decided that they wanted to go out and celebrate the end of the war, which just complicated matters. And literally millions died. Right. I, I think the one quote I think I read was 18 million really? died from the, from the Spanish flu. Wow. Um, but, but coming to where we are today, when I, when I read this verse and I think about what that means, that first few words, trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. When we come to church every Sunday or Wednesday or whatever your your particular church has service, and you go in there and you sit in your comfortable pews, mm -hmm. and you do so without any fear of uh, government interference right. in your right to worship, right. or someone else coming in and causing difficulty. That's right. We're not, we're not exercising our trust, if you will. Yeah. And I don't mean this as a criticism. No, no. This is an observation, because I'm, I'm speak, I am speaking of myself as well. Yeah. So then this comes along and all of a sudden we can't do this. Right. Now, one of the things that is a passion that I have for our, our, our church here at Moraine City is home church. I want to see our small groups become active and I want to see small groups grow to strengthen the church mm -hmm. and to grow the church. Sure. Uh, if you go back and read Acts, that's, they didn't have buildings like this. You know, when they were able to even go to the synagogues, it still wasn't their building. They were right. using someone else's. So home church is where they came together and worshiped and broke bread. Now we are breaking bread at home alone without each other. And our audience out there this evening, they're each one in their own home or perhaps in their car if they're parked somewhere and watching us on Facebook or YouTube they're experiencing isolation that requires them to do something we haven't done really in a long time, and that's trust the Lord. Amen. We're trusting the Lord that His that's Spirit right. will not be limited by the fact that we are not gathered together in a building together, but that Spirit is not limited. He is God. Thank he is Lord. God here. He is God at home with us when we're at work, when we're in the hospital where Andrea and so many others are today. He is still God. Amen. And so we need to be obedient to the Spirit to worship Him when we come together at times like this and to lift one another up in prayer and praise. And when we do this, we're going to feel 
I know Sunday in the parking lot here, I felt God's presence Amen. so strongly. Yeah. I was just blessed beyond words, yeah. beyond words. That was and good. That's what we need to do. We need more of this circumstance that makes us trust the Lord. Not just say the words. Yeah. We have to live those words. You know, we talk about trusting in the Lord. And, and to be honest with you, um, even the disciples of Jesus, they, did, they, they thought they trusted Jesus, but they really didn't know it No, until... Mm -hmm. They were tested. Right. Amen. That's right. You, you see, if you ever want to know if you really trust the Lord or not, and you want to see how strong your spiritual walk is and how close you are to the mm -hmm. Lord, yeah. you feel it and know it without a doubt. It's not, it's not a question mark then. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you go through an experience, yeah. and then, you know, of course, the disciples said, oh, I'm never going to deny you. Yeah, they all might, but I'm not going to deny you. And then, of course, he Denied three times. Mm -hmm. Three times. Sometimes we think more highly of ourselves than we really are. And we think our faith is stronger than it really is. And we set ourselves up on a pedestal when we got to realize, and here's, I think, you're, you know, our trust grows and is stronger when we realize that we can't do it. Yes. The only way we can really trust the Lord is mm -hmm. to say, God, I'm unable. Mm -hmm. I'm frail. I'm fragile. I'm, I'm human. Lord, you know that. You made me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the, really the, the best thing we could do is basically what the Bible tells us to do is humble ourselves. Yes. And say, Lord, I'm unable, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to depend on what I can or cannot do. What my heart or can't, can, you know, cannot do is what you can do, Lord. Is I, I'm going to put my faith in that. Amen. Amen. I love it when uh, one of my favorite scriptures is when uh, the father's wanting his daughter healed, uh, and he says, "You know, do you have faith?" And he said, "Well, I got faith." He says, "But help my unbelief." Mm -hmm. yeah. In other words, he realized there's a little part of me. Yes, I got faith, or I would never come talk to you in the first place. Yes. So he had to have some kind of faith. But he, 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 he had a little bit of, he's got, you know, but help that little part of me yeah. that is unbelieving. Yes, that and, honesty and I think in this that part needs to be, re, re, we need to all look at that part. Yes. We like to look at the part where we have faith. Mm -hmm. But what we really mm -hmm. need to focus on a little bit more is what's that little part that you're holding back where mm -hmm. faith has not really manifested itself in that area? Yes, when I started going to work part-time here, um, having been retired for six, over six years, and then going back to work work was a humbling experience. And well, after the first day, I made it a practice to, as young as to talk to the Lord on my way to work to tell him, I'm just going to be honest with you, Lord. I, I, I can't physically do this work, but I can if you will do it through me. Yeah. If you'll do it through me, and then let me, let me be that blessing. Let me touch someone Amen. today. We need to realize our limitations. Yes. And, and that's what all of us. It, it, we, and some of you sitting out there, bless your heart, you think, I'm so super holy, I'm spiritual, I'm, I'm sanctified, I'm full of the Spirit, and I, I don't have a limitation. Pride cometh before the fall. Yes, amen. And let me just tell you, every one of us have weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Every one mm -hmm. of us. It's not that you're fallen or you're, you're in sin or that you're living in sin. It's not, that's not what I'm talking about. Every one of us have areas that the devil will work on and he'll prod at. Mm -hmm. And it'll just, it'll just tweak. You know, sometimes we was growing up, my brother, bless his heart, I love him to pieces. And we, we're as close as two brothers ever thought about being now. But when we grew up, he was a, he was a pesterer. <laughs> he, he liked to aggravate, just, you know, and he knew mm -hmm. exactly what to say and how to do it just to make it just a, that much worse. What, that what if he, he thought he was good, listen, the devil's that ten times, a million times worse than him. Yeah. The devil will prod. He'll get right where you don't want him to be. He'll find that weak spot, and he'll just twist on it. Now, here's the good part about that news is you learn your weakness, and instead of acting like it's mm -hmm. not there, Claim it. Take it before God. Lord, 
Here's my weakness. Here's my frailty. Here's the problem that I have. Now, Lord, I'm going to put this into place now. I'm going to start trusting you that you're going to help me to work through this and be stronger when I come out on the other yeah, side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know the old saying, what don't kill you makes you stronger? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You know, there's a lot of truth in that. I don't know how biblical it is as far as <laughs> those very words for sure, but, but it's a lot of truth in it. Yeah. You are tested by the fire. And when the fire can't burn you, you come out stronger. It's when the three Hebrew boys got put in the fire. Man, they didn't, honestly, they didn't have a clue what was going to happen. <laughs> Live or die, they was going to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. If we'll go into our situation like that, praise the Lord, we will come out just like they did. You say, well, we might die. You're right, but man, what the other side's going to look like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We may die from this whole flesh, but then thank God we've got a glorious body waiting on us where we're going to be able to rejoice and have no more aches, no pains. I just won. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and then it. if I stay and I still trust the Lord and I get through it and my body's still intact and I'm still alive on this mm -hmm. earth, guess what? I still won. You still win. <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't matter how it comes out. As long as we trust the Lord, we're going to win. Amen. And if I had a word for our dear brother that we just prayed for that has cancer in Florida, I believe he lives in Florida. If, if I had a word for him, I would tell him the same thing. You need to be trusting the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Just humble yourself before the Lord and mm -hmm. let God just take hold of this situation. And whether you, he heals you on this earth or whether you go to the next, be ready, trust God, and let him have his way. Amen. Because if mm -hmm. you'll trust in the Lord with all thine heart and, and lean not unto thine own understanding, he says, in all thy ways acknowledge him. And then he says, and he shall direct your path. Thy path. Listen, mm -hmm. he's not just directing your thoughts. He's not just directing what you're going to do next. Mm -hmm. He's going to direct the plan that he has for your life. Mm -hmm. And his paths always end up in a blessing. Yes, they do. They do. Job said, yet though he slay me, I will, serve, I will serve him. Yeah, and that's, that's, no matter what the outcome is, that's who we're, our only hope is in him. Yeah. Praise our the only Lord. hope. Yeah. That's right. So, so let me ask you, we're, we're talking, I get, I, I told them beforehand, oh, we got to watch my time and because I get excited when we start talking, especially at verses like this, because mm -hmm. it blesses me because it helps sh the, the iron sharpens iron on this. I mean, we start talking about this and how God wants us and blesses us and helps us and, and enriches our lives and strengthens us. He provides for us. He protects us. Mm -hmm. he, he's everything. But let me ask you something. While you're sitting watching this, is he your everything? We can talk all we want about how beautiful this verse is and what it should mean to us mm -hmm. and how much we should trust God. But do you trust the Lord? In the heat of the moments in your life, are you trusting God? Do you, do you find your, <laughs> your kink in your armor, your little, little problems in your, in your faith? If you do, don't, don't back up. Don't quit say, oh, I can't do it. You know, that's what the mm -hmm. devil wants us to do. He wants us just to lay yes. down and quit and say, I can't do it. I failed again. I can't do it. What you need to do is say, Lord, this is a weak spot. Father, he already knew that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, you're not surprising God with the weak spot you have. God already knows you. Yep. He created you just mm -hmm. the way you are. Mm -hmm. He knows exactly about you. He knows everything about you. So what, I mean, you're not surprising God. But what you're doing is finding out who you are mm -hmm. and how you're made up. Yeah. I have weaknesses that you might not have. You have weaknesses mm -hmm. that I don't have. Mm -hmm. What you need to find out is who you are, where you are before the Lord, where your weaknesses are, and then let God have his way and trust him. Yes. And lean not on what you can plan. This is a problem. We try to figure it out, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. And I always claim, and even as service, you've heard me countless times say, us, we men, mm, uh, and that's fixers. the one time I'm going to put the men under the bus here, but <laughs> we men are worse at that than anybody else. We're fixers. Yeah. we got to fix it. We want to put our hands around it. Yeah. Yep. We want to make it okay. When my daughters are hurting, I want to make it all right. Yeah. I want to grab that boy that she's been dating and broke her heart. I want to grab him by the ever-loving <laughs> throat and just touch him in the name of Jesus. As I squeeze his little throat. You know, that's what you want to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. But that's not always the best thing. Mm -hmm. 
So we got to quit leaning onto what we think we ought to do and say, okay, Lord, what should I do? How should I, how can I put my faith in you, Lord, when I'm going through cancer? And I'm not going to pretend to tell anybody that's going through cancer what they should and should not do as far as the decisions they make on chemotherapy or going through radiation or, or not doing anything. I, I can't tell you that because here's why. I've never been in, that, in, in, the, in those positions. Mm -hmm. I've never had to deal with that. But what I can tell you is, because no mm -hmm. matter what your situation, mm -hmm. no, no matter if it's your relationship that's going bad, mm -hmm. and no matter if your kids are going wrong, doesn't matter if you got cancer, doesn't matter if you're a pastor of a church and you mm -hmm. don't know what to do with the coronavirus that's all around you. Yep. It doesn't matter what your situation is, this, this scripture holds true. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change. It does not. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. It does not. It, it's the anchor that holds us in place. Amen. Mm -hmm. it is. Only, only if we hold on to it. Right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. you, know, we can, you can carry the book around, but you've got to... Mm -hmm. You've got to embrace this. Yeah. Each of us have to take this word and not just have a head knowledge of it. We need to have a heart application. Amen. So that when we are confronted by the coronavirus, when we are confronted by cancer, as my wife uh, made the comment one time, when a friend of hers was, uh, told her that she had cancer and wanted Kathy to pray for her. And Kathy went to the Lord in prayer. And God said to Kathy, it's only cancer. I'm God. It's only cancer. Amen. And that's, the, that's how our faith is going to grow. That's right. When we recognize we can't fix it, and we simply go to God and tell him, we are, we are we're dust under your feet. Yeah. We need <clears throat> you. If he can breathe life into a pile of dust and call his name Adam, he can certainly take care of any problems that might land us. Amen. Thank the Lord. Yes, yes amen. Thing is incurable to God. No, absolutely. No, no, it, it, there's no such thing as death to God. He could raise them just with a word. Yes, you know? sir. He did it several times. Jerry Newell, I like this. Thank you, Brother Jerry, for your comment. He says, he knew what tree Adam was ha hiding behind, and he knows us as well. <laughs> so, I, I agree. Amen. With you. That's good. That's very amen. good. I, I was thinking, just as you were speaking, um, trust in the Lord. And I started thinking on the negative side of this, and, and I hate to do that. Some, you know, I try to be as positive as I can, but there's a lot of reasons people don't trust. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, if you start thinking about it, a lot of us, uh, maybe some of you that's had a bad childhood, it's hard for you to trust anybody because of your, your, the, the things that's happened to you, the experiences you've had in life. Your experiences can mis make any, you not only mistrust God, but mistrust everybody. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Your relationships have been broken, mm -hmm. over broken, over broken because you've not been able to trust anybody. Even if they say, I love you and you're, you're so beautiful or you're wonderful or, and I love you with all my heart and I'll never hurt you, you can't trust that because of what's happened in the past. Mm -hmm. um, some of you out there have... have mistrusted doctors, you'll mistrust the government, and you miss. and listen, I can understand a lot of that, because we are in a society mm -hmm. that it's hard, it's really hard to trust mm -hmm. what you hear all the time. Mm -hmm. It used to be that people would trust pastors. Didn't matter what mm -hmm. denomination, you could have been a Baptist or mm -hmm. Church of God or, you know, whatever denomination, yes, amen. And, and, and they would trust them. Now, mm -hmm. everybody's skeptical. Now, what's wrong with that? I understand why people are skeptical. I'm skeptical, too. I'm, I, I tell people all the time, I'm the biggest skeptic of them all in some ways because I'm always looking for what's behind the purpose, what's behind what he's saying, what's behind mm -hmm. what they're doing, you know. But with God, there's no ulterior motive. Only your good. Isn't that awesome? He doesn't have something else he's trying to work on the side <laughs> to help him out. He don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> he's God. So he doesn't, need, he doesn't need for you to trust him so you can, he can work something else. He's mm -hmm. asking you to trust him mm -hmm. but it's because he wants the very best for you. Yes, he does. Yeah, he does. I, I love that verse. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you bringing that one up. That's a good verse. Jerry Newell. 
Buddy, you're on top the uh, on top of it again tonight. You have won the Royer Brothers CD. Peter, Peter was the answer. Denise, you mind tell them where, where it's at? Matthew 8, 14 and 15 says, When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand. And the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. Very good. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and do the next uh, giveaway, the next Bible trivia, if you don't mind. It is uh, Jeff and Sherry Easter. You are loved mm. CD. Uh, I guarantee you, we had this, those guys at our church uh, last year, and man, I, they were good. I, that's when I had my finger was so messed up, and I couldn't mm -hmm. come, fever and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> And I watched them online, and I was oh, so envious that everybody got to come because it was it's such a, we got to have them back. They were, they were tremendous. Uh, Jeff and Sherry Easter CD, uh, you are loved. And Denise, you read the next question to them so they can we can start. Yep. Don't read the answer, just the okay. question. <laughs> <laughs> Which god was Paul mistaken for in Lystra? Is that right? Which god was Paul mistaken for in Lystra? All right. So you go ahead and chime in on that as we continue on with our Bible study and, and with, with getting to know uh, Mike and Kathy a little bit. So trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean on unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? How can we do that? How should we do that? I don't mean to stop well, you. I'll no, answer if you want. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's use the example of how we ended up here. Yeah, good. Okay. When um, Kathy's mother and father, when, when Papa started uh, having difficulty driving, when the dementia started manifesting itself, uh, we're the only ones in the family that were retired. Her one sister and family live up in Troy. Yeah. Her brother and his wife still worked, and they lived in East Dayton. And then another sister and her husband lived in Florida. They lived very close to us. And I had told Kathy that the Lord put it on my heart that when he gets to where they can't get around by transportation, we will be their taxi. We will take them to church. And at the time, we were trying to plant a church in Germantown with another family. And so... Selfishly, we wanted them to go to church with us. Sure. But uh, I had told the Lord, wherever you want them to go, that's where we're going to take them. And they, w they were coming here. And Brother Hayes was the pastor at the time. And uh, so I told Kathy, I said, well, we'll go there. We'll go to that church because that's where they want to go. I want them to be able to be where they feel God needs them. That's awesome. So that's what we did. Now, th I'm not saying this to pat us on the back. This is... This was a need. We saw the need. We were able to meet the need and still be able to worship God. That's what we did. Amen. And so we started coming. And uh, every, it seemed like every time we would come, they, they wouldn't come in the evening. They just didn't have the strength to come all three services each week. But we would bring them Sunday morning and sometimes Wednesday night they would come. <clears throat> but every time we would come, we would be greeted by everybody. Oh, nice to have you visiting. Who are you? So, and we would come in with Papa and Nanny, and we would remind them we are their daughter and son-in-law. And they would all make us feel welcome, and then the next Sunday it would be the same thing over and over again. And we got to the point where we were thinking, maybe they don't really see us. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe they don't see us, but we kept coming because we were doing this because the Lord put it on our heart to do it for Nanny sure. and Papa. That's great. And we'd been coming here... Mm, about a year, maybe, a little over a year. And I told Kathy one morning, I said, you know, I said, the Lord has told me this is, this is our church. This is where we need to be. Yeah. And she said, he said the same thing to her. So that makes it unanimous. That's right. Makes it unanimous. So we started coming. Then shortly after that, you came. And... Uh, then it's, you really thought about it's been, a really, it's, been a, it's been a really exciting ride ever since you got here. Yeah. Now, I love Brother Hayes and, and his wife. They're great pastors, great uh, 
uh, mentality with regard to having compassion for this congregation, and there are many elderly in this congregation, as you know. Mm -hmm. So they were, uh, they were living at the hospital, it seemed like, and at the nursing home, and mm -hmm. doing a lot of visitation. Uh, you have come, God has put a different vision in front of you when you came here, and as I've said, Brother and Sister Hayes' time came and went, and they went as God directed them. Now you're here, we're here, and we, we just can't wait for the next thing that's going to unfold. Yeah. God's in, in charge, and we're, uh, we're along for the ride. Well, I'm excited to what the next thing will be, too, because it's, I feel, I've said it before. I've said it on Facebook, so the whole world would know, but I think revival is going to come out of this, yes. this situation. And it's just like the cancer was talking about, you know, we, there's something good going to come out. Mm -hmm. I think every time we go through an issue, especially like this, mm -hmm. I've never in my lifetime, never. I've asked people that's 90-something years old, have you ever seen anything like this? Mm -hmm. no, but nobody has. No. It's like when they keep saying the words unprecedented, it really is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think, and I've talked to a bunch, my wife has, I know you all have, have talked to a bunch of people in our congregation and mm -hmm. in the community, mm -hmm. and everybody is excited about getting to church again. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the that's the fire of revival, I think, that's coming up. Um, that's where we are, back to our verse, we are trusting in the Lord, and people are getting practical application Amen. in their everyday life, having to commune with God, I should say getting to commune with God at yeah. home on a more regular basis mm -hmm. without the opportunity to come to church. They're now becoming more dependent upon that conversation with the Lord on a daily basis. And when we all get to come back into church, it's going to be a knockdown, drag out. Let's, who's can get in the pew first? That's and right. uh, who can get up and testify first? Who can praise the Lord? That's, that's what we're looking for. And so I, the front pew is going to be filled finally. <laughs> You know, that's funny you said that. <laughs> that's funny you said that because when we came to church Sunday, there was a spot open, which we were lucky enough to get. Yeah. And uh, I was thinking, you know, there's still people still parking in the back like they were sitting in the church. <laughs> but the pictures that are on the pews, our dear sister put them all up in the front end uh, of the church. Right. And I, yeah. I, that looks so good up there. We'd have the a first time out. I saw it. Yeah. That's yeah. so exciting. Yeah. Well, we've uh, so when you get back, we're going to leave these pictures up. So when you get back, find your seat. And find your seat. Where that's at. Yeah, that's that's There's your assigned seating for now. <laughs> Amen. On. Amen. You're not allowed to move back. You got a assigned seating. So I'm excited too. And I was thinking about this in all thy ways. You know, we think of some of these verses. We kind of just read over it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't look at word for word. And I I love looking at word for word. I just like breaking it down a little bit because that way my my little feeble mm -hmm. mind can take it in. So. But when it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding, in all, that little three-letter word mm -hmm. is where we get a little mm -hmm. nook. Out. You mm -hmm. know, it, it kind of hangs us up just a little bit. We do it in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. We do it in most ways. Mm -hmm. But when we say, in all thy ways, mm -hmm. acknowledge, not just in all thy ways, trust him, in all thy ways, do something for him. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And in other words, here's what I get out of this, just for a moment. Is in all thy ways, make sure that you're a mirror image of who he is. <laughs> in other words, I am nothing without Jesus. Yep. I am yes. nothing. I can do nothing. I can do nothing right. I can do nothing at all. I can't think on my own. I can't walk on my own. I can't preach on my own. Can't think, can't do anything mm -hmm. without the Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. And so in all my ways, I've got to acknowledge that if it's not for Him, mm -hmm. then we're done. Yeah. We have no hope. Mm -hmm. And man, that's an overwhelming thought. Mm -hmm. that ought to, if, that, if nothing else humbles you, mm -hmm. friend, that ought to. That honestly, it's only by the grace and the mercy of God. It's only by the power and the manifestation of the Spirit of God in our lives that allows us to be a Christian, to be, allows us to get out of the bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. It is only a gift from God that we have any abilities mm -hmm. whatsoever. Every talent you have is given by God. Every, every, every job you can keep 
It's given by God because he gives you the strength to get up, the wisdom to be mm -hmm. able to do it. He <laughs> gives you the mindset to be able to know your own name. He even prepares the person that's going to hire you Amen. to be, to pick you out of the crowd. And that's part of the paths that he's planned that's for it. you. Mm -hmm. That's it. We can't do anything without, it says, acknowledge him. It that's means right. to be aware of his presence, yeah. to welcome him that you are in his presence. <laughs> Not only is he in your presence, yeah. you, we are in God's presence. Praise the and Lord. as such, we need to be like that high priest who is going into the inner sanctuary to offer that sacrifice for the nation. Amen. We need to be aware that this is a loving but holy God Amen. that we're going before. Amen. And so we need to yeah. keep ourselves humble. We need to not be full of ourselves. I'm so thankful he's ready and willing yes. to help me stay humble. He's used many people in my life <laughs> to bring me back to a center of humility. Yes. And uh, this is not me boasting on humility because I still get beat up every day with it. Sure. It's a, I'm a human. So I, uh, uh, my one friend said, as long as I'm in this meat sack, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to get things right. You know? <laughs> so yeah. I, I'm just thankful that God loves us. Yeah beyond our understanding, mm -hmm. beyond uh, our concept of who and how God loves us. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Sister Willa uh, made a comment exactly. If Christ were removed from your life, nothing but an empty shell remains. Right. Yes, uh, That's amen. a good statement. She's Thank right. you, Sister Willa. Uh, we have a winner, by the way, with the... Um, with a second tri Bible trivia question of Jeff and Sherry Easter CD, and it is a good friend of ours from Clay City, Kentucky, I believe. Yes, it's not about Connie. Uh, Connie Gaylord Reed. Is that right, her last name? Yep. I just know her by Connie Gaylord for so many years, <laughs> I really don't know the Reed because she got married. Mm. But uh, Connie Gaylord Reed, you won this Jeff and Sherry Easter. Tell her where the answer came from. That way we, everybody will know. Okay, it's Acts 14, 11 through 12. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the, what's that word? Lacedaemonian <laughs> uh, Language. The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes. Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. All right. Good job, Connie. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Let me do the last one because we're going get to get in the interview a little bit. It is for the big prize this evening. <laughs> is Esther Price chocolate, 16 ounce, or one whole pound of chocolate. This will make you happy, especially while you're sitting there. It's got milk and dark <laughs> assortment. So, you know, you might not be able to get out, but you at least eat good with that chocolate. So, <laughs> Question number three, and this question, I just got to tell you, came from our guest this evening. It's from Mike Glander. After the last session on Friday, he gave us a, he gave us a great question, and uh, I think this hopefully will stump you a little bit, so make you at least search a little bit. So question number three is this. What modern convenience of transportation is mentioned in the Bible, and where is it found? What modern convenience of transportation is mentioned in the Bible and where is it found? If you all don't get the answer, I get the chocolates. That's right. <laughs> I was about to say, she was about to take the chocolate before the question ever thought. Yes. But, yeah, so two questions. Let me, let's get on with a little bit more of, of you personally now. We appreciate the okay. great study and that, what a wonderful verse. And it ought to all, challenge every one of us according to the scriptures. Uh, start leaning under your own, not into your under, own understanding, but you need to start trusting the Lord in all thine heart, every bit of you, and you need to start acknowledging Him and everything you do. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just say one thing, and I, I'm, I'm going to get to you, I promise. But let me just say one thing because it just hit my mind and I'm a little concerned. We are in a time right now where everybody is stuck at home most of the time. There's few people still running around, all that kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But most of us, stay, it's, we got stay-at-home orders all across the country. Mm -hmm. What you say on Facebook mm -hmm. represents who you are. 
you don't stop being a Christian because you're behind a screen and a keyboard. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm saying that, I say that now, blanketly. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying something or sharing something, if you're sharing, I don't share, let me just give you an idea. I try not to share anything knowingly that does not represent Christ well because I want to acknowledge him in all my ways. Mm -hmm. So if it has something inappropriate that you wouldn't say in the front of the preacher or say in front of Jesus, mm -hmm. you need to not share it. Amen. I love you, <laughs> but I'm telling you something mm -hmm. that will help you spiritually. We need to be careful how we portray ourselves Amen. online yes. mm -hmm. because it will give people a wrong impression, one of who we are, mm -hmm. what we stand for, and one and another who we represent. So be careful, folks. As you're sitting home and you're sitting there and you're behind the screen and you share this and share that, be careful what you're sharing. Yes. Don't do something that's going to hurt somebody else or say something that's going to put you in a bad light. Please. It's not the way God intended us to be. We are supposed to be beyond this world. We're supposed mm -hmm. to walk on a different plane than where the world is. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to be holy in all our ways. Mm -hmm. yes. So please make sure you are careful with that. Okay? I love you. Amen. <laughs> but I'm telling you the truth. All right. I want to get to you guys a little bit now. I had to share that because it, it hit my mind. It, was, it just seemed like perfect time. Excuse me for that. So, Mike and Kathy, you guys have been a tremendous blessing to us anyway. In this church, you're just always excited. About, and I love when you get happy because your testimonies just, you, you can't help but cry or, or just to get excited. And you just, I can't hold it back. I got to tell it. And I just love that because it just shows the passion you have in your heart. And it blesses me mm -hmm. and not only me, but it blesses the whole church. And so we appreciate you guys. You've been a, such a blessing in, in many ways. Uh, and then I've got to know your family a little bit uh, with your daughters and mm -hmm. things and the birth of her, her, uh, your daughter's children. And, mm -hmm. and, man, it was just a blessing to be a part of that, that mindset. And mm -hmm. you've got a, a tremendous family. So tell us a little bit, first of all, I guess, about your family. How many, how many kids do you have, grandkids, all that good stuff? Here you go. we got three. Girls. Speak in that a little bit more. <laughs> We've got three girls and five grandchildren, and hopefully another one or two coming. <laughs> <laughs> They're hoping. <laughs> All right, very good. And so after, so what brought you? Talk to me a little bit about what you brought you to the church. But what, what affected your life, or what caused you to be saved? Was it somebody? Was it somebody in your family? Was some stranger? What? How did, what did you tell me a little bit about your conversion, if you don't mind? And whoever wants to go first is fine. Here you go. Let's see if I can keep this short. You're fine. <laughs> um, I was raised in church, mm -hmm. and I, I knew about salvation, but I don't, com I don't think I completely understood. Um, and I understand why a lot of people think, okay, I was raised in church, so I'm a Christian. I mean, I didn't feel that way. But um, anyway, um, after we got married, gosh, we were married for, I guess, almost 20 years. And unfortunately, we kind of got our eyes off of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I backslid. Mm -hmm. And I hate even hearing the words right. come from my mouth uh, for quite a bit. And in that time, in that um, I, I did things and went places. If people would have ever told me you were going to do this, I would have said you're a liar. That's not me. Right. I don't do that stuff. I don't say that stuff. I don't go there, you know. And um, but there's hope. If you have children who are backslidden and they've been raised in church, there wasn't hardly a day went by that God did not speak to my heart yeah. and I felt that conviction and the devil say this is who you are this bad person the other person wasn't who you are this is who you are yeah. and I would think well maybe it is maybe this is the real me yeah. and then God would say no that's not the real you <laughs> yeah thank the Lord and I would I would think about how I was living and it would bother me and I would think I don't like this person. I didn't like myself. I felt black. Sure. And um, 
anyway, had a lot of people praying for me, especially my family. And uh, I'd been telling the Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to change. I'm going to live different. I don't want to live this way anymore. Tomorrow it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. And I would get up and tomorrow would be the same. Mm. And I don't remember the exact one, but it was Mother's Day evening. And I was in bed and God was speaking to me. And I didn't feel the tug like you do in church. But I said, God, I'm going to live for you if you never bless me again. <laughs> because I'm tired of this life. Bless your heart. And I woke up the next day and it was different. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And from that day on, and it's been 10 years. I don't, longer. I don't know, 15 years, something. Uh, maybe longer than that. Yeah. That I came back to him, but I always regret the day um, that I went back on him. But <clears throat> I called the church, and my dad was here. And I said, Dad, I came home. <laughs> and he goes, what? <laughs> and I said, I came mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. And there was dead silence. I said, I came back to the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I could hear him shout. <laughs> <laughs> he was here working on yeah. the building. Oh, I don't doubt it. Yeah. And I could hear him shouting and praising God. And I know a lot of prayers had gone up for me. But there, there's hope if you have children Amen. and you Amen. raise the church. Amen. And I've had my family pray for people, and I've heard other people say, oh, my gosh, I don't understand. This is, I'm scared. Yeah. There's no guarantee they'll come back. But the Bible says if you raise them right, that they won't forget it. Amen. And they, do, they don't. Amen. Like I said, I, I felt that conviction. And there was even times that I felt a homesickness Amen. to come back. Because I remembered the blessing Amen. and the good part. That's awesome. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Well, praise the Lord. Yeah. So if you don't mind me, so... You, in your heart, it sounds like the, you was, the Lord was convicting you without even church or yeah. really outside forces. It was just directly from the Lord that was convicting you, huh? Yeah, it was prayers of the saints. I know it was. Yeah. There was a lot of people praying for me. Mm. Yeah. That goes to show you and me uh, that there's people I know that you've been praying for for a long time, and, and I have too, and... We've all got burdens for lost loved ones, kids, or grandkids, you know, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, family members, friends, whatever. Don't give up. Amen. I, I think she's Pers a living example That's right. of, the, of the progress that can be made with just yeah. the prayers. Uh, that is, that's awesome. That's it might guy. go on for years, and you might get discouraged and think, oh, my gosh, it's been all these years, and nothing's happening. Something's happening. Amen. I guarantee you, <laughs> you can't forget. Yeah. When yeah. you've been raised in church, you cannot forget that. That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, Brother Mike. Well, uh, I wasn't be hard raised. hard to outdo that one now. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> raised in church. Yeah. I was uh, from a very dysfunctional family. Uh, my first memory of church was in the 50s. We lived on a, in a double, on one side of a double on Xenia Avenue. And the Dayton Baptist Temple was, all they had built at that point was the basement. They were holding church in the basement. They didn't have it upstairs. And they had a huge bus ministry. And the bakers lived next door to us. I was second grade, third grade, something like that. They asked our parents, my younger brother Bob and I, they asked our parents if they could take us to vacation Bible school. Uh. And uh, you don't know Gerald Fleming. He's, I believe he's already gone on to glory. But Gerald Fleming was a red-headed, uh, Coke bottle glasses wearing, tall, lanky, crying preacher <laughs> who loved God yeah. and loved people. And uh, so they did the vacation Bible school, and then they told us the last day, now we have to go out in the sanctuary, and we're going to, you know, we're going to have you be, you have to be good. And, you, and then when he says, anybody wants to come down and pray, we want you to all go down and pray well. And then they said, and then there'll be cookie and punch afterwards. Well, I'm going for the cookie and punches. <laughs> um, 
anyway, that was my first experience with church, and it didn't take, needless to say. Yeah. Uh, so then I went in the service. Uh, I had one plan. God had another plan. I went in the service. Um, I'm in Korea, my second tour overseas, and while I'm in Korea, my family gets saved. Everybody but me and my dad. Wow. Were the only, I mean, when I say everybody, I mean my brothers, my sisters, their husbands, their children. You know, they're all, all they want to do is talk about God. And I didn't know this until I get home on leave. I come home from Korea. My next tour is going to be in Ethiopia. Mm. And I had to wait on my passport. I come home, and I'm confronted by all these Jesus freaks. And it was very unsettling <laughs> for a guy who wanted to drink and party and right. carouse. Doesn't fit very well. I just well. wasn't comfortable. Yeah. You know, the, uh, conviction is what it was. Uh, sure. I didn't call it that, but that's what it was. Sure. So my uh, one sister was, had a little more wisdom and showed a little more grace, lived in Columbus, Peggy. And uh, she called me and she said, uh, would you like to come up and spend the weekend with us? Mm-hmm. We'll go out to dinner. And if you want, you can go to church with me on Sunday. I said, yeah, we can go to dinner. <laughs> so we go, I go up and we have a nice dinner that Saturday evening. And then Sunday I went to church with her. And she went to an assembly of God. I don't remember which one it was. It was a large church. But as you walk up the steps and into the main, uh, into, through the main doors into the church, they had this large wall and all these pictures of uh, men and women in uniform. Mm. And my sister said, That's, those are our men and women, children, husbands, that, brothers that we're praying for. And I'd like to put your picture up there, if you don't mind. Yeah. I thought, well, prayer can't hurt. <laughs> you know? I said, sure, you can do that. So, and it, I don't remember the sermon. There was, no, th- there was an invitation, but I didn't move. Right. It wasn't God's timing. So anyway, to kind of cut this shorter, I, I get my passport and I go to Eritrea, Ethiopia, for uh, my two years. And I'm, my plans are to get discharged in country with a, another buddy of mine I'm stationed with. He and I are going to get an open ticket to, oh, you have one year from your discharge date to fly back to the U.S. from anywhere in Europe. Mm. So our plan was to ride the trains through Europe and sightsee, just going to bum through the country before we go back to the States. Uh, Denny had a short-timers party the night before he was getting discharged, and he was getting out a week before me. And he got arrested because they had drugs and stuff downtown. He was in the private sector, so the uh, Eritrean police arrested him, and we had to have the CID go down and take him away from them. There's a Complicated. And then they didn't let him get discharged in country. They give him an Article 15 and sent him back to the States and left me alone. Mm. I mean, I, now my plans are changed. Right. Anyway, I get up one night and I go to work after this has happened to him. And I was an NCO and a shift supervisor, and I worked in an operations building. Uh, it was classified operations. Can't tell you what I did. It's not important. Just that that's where I was. And I had to go out and check on c- certain things. In, uh, it was at, on midnights. I had to go out and check on these other rooms to see how they were doing with their assignments. And I remember walking out into the hallway, and that's the last thing I remember. The next thing I remember, I'm in a room in the dark, in a bed, as in a hospital. Wow. Didn't know it. And uh, I was a chain smoker, along with a lot of other things I did that I'm not proud of. But my habit when I would wake up would be to reach over to the nightstand next to the bed and find my cigarettes and light one up before I ever turned the light on or got out of bed. Just that was my routine. That's what I did. And I opened the drawer looking for my cigarettes when they weren't on top. And my hand reached in the drawer. And my hand touched a book. (laughs) Now, I was in the hospital. I'm... I never saw the book. I just felt it. But I knew when I touched that book, it was a Bible. Right. And God said to me in no uncertain terms, this is your last chance. Wow. And I was scared, and I was broken, and I confessed and asked him to save me. And then about five days later, I got discharged, and I flew back to the States. And when I got to New York, I called my sister Peg, who had moved back to the Dayton area from Columbus at that time, her and her family. And I told her what happened. 
And she said, I got just a little church for you to come visit when you get home. <laughs> and that little church was in Beaver Creek. It was the first church of God in Beaver Creek. Yeah. Uh, in Knollwood, actually. It was just a little small building. They had about 65 people there. Gene Wallace was the pastor. And Bob Hammond and Thelma Hammond were on the board mm -hmm. and one of the Sunday school teachers. Yeah. And I met them four times that first Sunday I was there. Four times. My family, her family, she wasn't there. My family, her family introduced me to them four times. The second Sunday I was there, Thelma felt so sorry for this long-haired, skinny-looking, <laughs> you know, homeless, almost homeless person. And so she insisted I come home to dinner with them. Yeah. And every Sunday after that, that was my new family. My yeah. mother lived in Florida at the time, so this worked out really good. Yeah. And I became friends with Bob and Thelma Hammond and Rosie, her youngest sister. She was 10. She was 10 at the time. Yeah. And uh, I had never met her. And one Sunday, uh, our paths crossed at the house. And it was maybe we became friends. We talked on the phone a lot, right? Lots of phone conversations, and one day, she was dating another guy at the time, and one day, we started dating, and I don't know, the next thing I know, I'm crazy about her. <laughs> so, you know, we got... You just uh, got that effect on him. <laughs> I asked her to marry me, and we were going to get married in June. We decided we couldn't wait till June. This was in, like, October, so we moved it up to December, and <laughs> we're rolling up on 49 years, and there's, it's not been... Years. It's not been a bliss. It's been a learning experience. It's been humbling. It's been difficult. But in the end, it's been God, and she is who God wants me to be with, Amen. and I'm who she's supposed to be with. And so when you say learning, it's been a learning experience, what you mean is she's been teaching you for almost 49 years, <laughs> or for almost 50 years. You know, she has, had, <laughs> she has shown me more grace than anybody <laughs> because she knows that uh, I was a heathen before yeah. I came to the Lord and that uh, she had to help me learn what was <laughs> proper and what was not proper. Yeah. But God has been good to both of us and we're so thankful that this is our home and we love this church family and we're so honored to be a small part in serving God through the men's ministry and whatever else he wants us to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lisa, have we got an answer? A cord, I've seen that several times. Airplanes, and that both of those is not what we was looking for. Sailboats, that's not what we're looking for either. Um, something more modern than that. It's Do a good one, huh? Yeah, Denise is looking good for that chocolate. You guys better chime in there. She's getting excited over here. Yeah. Um, not to give anyone a hint, but it is a modern convenience. A modern convenience of, of uh, way of travel. And so um, let's see what kind of hint we can give them. Because Careful. What modern, what modern convenience of transportation? Is now, mentioned. a cord, a cord was used, and, and you're right, it was a cord as a cord car. But yeah. that, they didn't use it as an accord car. This was used in the Bible the right way. No. No, it wasn't. No. 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 Now, look, look at what it says. Well, and it was a lot, let me say that, I'll tell you what. It was in the Old Testament. You could say We're that, looking yes. in the Old Testament, not in the right way, but it is in the Old Testament. <laughs> that we're looking at so if it helps you out a little bit hopefully and i'm, I'm making sure it ain't looked over anybody <laughs> to make sure but i don't see anybody that's got it yet but it is in the old testament so it's beyond the new testament y'all gotta no it's not ship mom glad to see you watching though mom and i've seen lloyd and uh, my aunt and uncle i think eileen and lloyd collins from oklahoma i've seen a whole bunch of folks there and we appreciate you all watching too your girls are watching. Uh-huh. They? they said, love your daddy. and uh, love you, mom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, some, one of them said, love you, mom, I think. And so they really are proud of you all, I'm, as they ought to be, because you guys have been a blessing to all of us. Nope, it's not Uber or wagon <laughs> or chariot. Uber's in the Old chariot, Testament. Well, I didn't see that. <laughs> nobody's driving chariots right now. Fury? No, it's not a Fury, Nick. Not a shuttle. <laughs> shuttle, no, no, keep going. 
It's in the Old Testament. A camel. <laughs> yeah, Shelby, there's people who run camels every day around here. I get tired. In Ethiopia, maybe. Them. When I get on the interstate, camels get in my way every time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding, Shelby. That's not right, though. Maybe just tell them the book. Just give the chocolates to Denise, Willa said. <laughs> Thanks, Willa. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Willa for Denise there. So, Mike, we have, uh, and I, y'all keep guessing. Well, the question was, again, what was the, uh, what's a modern convenience of transportation that is mentioned in the Bible? Yes. I'm just going to say, what is it? Because y'all ain't, so what is it? And mention the Bible, and it is in the Old Testament. That'll help you out some. Horse? Nope, Mom. That's not a good. That's a good. Equate, good. But it's not it. Um, that's not a modern. modern that's modern. not a modern convenience. So, convenience. if you don't know out there, and if you don't attend this church, you for sure don't know. But Mike has uh, been our men's. We just newly started a men's group. Because um, women's had a women's group for a long time. I mean, yes. in the church uh, for years, no doubt, many years. And uh, they do a lot of great things. But uh, the men's group really never had anything. <laughs> we used to joke a lot. Our men's group meeting was work day. And that, mm-hmm. that was the men's yeah. group. Yeah. Yeah. And so we started a men's group. And uh, it's been a blessing. I've always enjoyed it. it we have a good mm-hmm. time. And we used to have, well, until now, the coronavirus. But, but we used to have a meeting at least once a month. Yes. Uh, and it's usually a breakfast here lately. And it's been a, a Bible study and things. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about what your dreams or hopes and vision is for the men's group. What maybe some ideas of what we got looking at for the future. You know, just some of that kind of stuff, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I want to give credit where credit is certainly due. The men's group of this church, while maybe they didn't come together as a group, to identify themselves as a men's group, yeah. have always been service-oriented to the congregation. Yeah. Whenever there was someone who had a need with regard to uh, minor repairs around their house or yard work, the men in this church have always stepped up and done that. And yes, they always did a work day here at the church to take care of the, the needs of the church as well. So that's always been going on. Sure. The only thing that's changed since I came is they made me president when I wasn't here, and so, <laughs> so he now we have a men's group. that day, so he got voted in. <laughs> That's <laughs> so right. Don't ever miss a meeting. That's right. Or you just never know what you're going to be voted into in this church. No, so, but you've done a good job, and we've and you've we've done quite a bit of activities as far as we have. Group. We have. We've had we've uh, got a lot more plans, but we had uh, we've got some things done. The coronavirus kind of nipped in the yeah. bud our uh, fishing trip for this year. Yeah. We're going to treat them into a fishing trip up at Lake Erie. And uh, while that may not happen this year, we'll just push it off to next year. We'll still get it done. And uh, vision that I see for the men's group, first, our men's group needs to take advantage of the wisdom of the older men in our church. Amen. And those men need to be put in a position to mentor some of our younger male adults and kind of take them under their wing. There's, there's a wealth of information and skill and knowledge that they have inside their heads from life experience oh, sure. that young men who are willing to subject themselves to being mentored yeah. can benefit from. That's, that's, right. that's something we need to do. Uh, another thing I see the men's group doing is uh, going beyond just our trips down to Hillsboro, which have been a blessing to me to go down right. and help the Hillsboro Church with their uh, food distribution. And we see that uh, you've already got some, something going on here at the church that happened since we've been isolated with the Pirate Pack, Absolutely. which is a, a, a program that's been going on here in West Carrollton, voluntary, uh, separated from the schools, but it is targeting uh, children in the West Carrollton school system mm-hmm. for meals. Yep. And now that the schools are closed, those meals are even more important. Yep. So this is another venue that I believe the men's group can step up and participate in and be a blessing to the community. Absolutely. And when the need is there and Christ's people meet that need and then the Spirit opens the door to allow us to talk about the Lord, mm-hmm. lives are changed. Amen. Yeah. That's and that's right. what we're supposed to be about. Amen. One of the uh, one of the most exciting things that I 
remember us doing at least is uh, so far is when we went to go to um, Wilmington. Yes, for the dinner. And uh, we had two groups of men that met one evening in Wilmington at their church. And we all packed up on the bus and went over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, that was an exciting night. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. It was just a wonderful spirit. We had a great, I mean, they put on, uh, in fact, we still owe them a dinner. Yes, we do. <laughs> they put on a tremendous dinner, wonderful group of folks. And um, man, it was a blessing because we was able to pray together, get to know each other, and then had a speaker that was outstanding. Mm -hmm. It was just really inspiring. It was. And we even had uh, one of my friends from my Octagon Bible study group I do on Tuesday nights at the 3C uh, uh, Church over in Miamisburg, uh, Doug... Um, my mind, I just became a senior citizen <laughs> just now. Yeah. Just now. Uh, he, he came with us on that, on that trip. And one of the things that you've expressed a passion for, Pastor, which I wholeheartedly support, is knocking down the walls of, of uh, denominationalism in the, uh, the opportunity, allowing us to fellowship and to worship with other congregations. And this is how the church is supposed to be. Right. And so we, the men's group, needs to be part of that mechanism to invite other people. We're seeing it uh, often with our friends over in Moraine City mm -hmm. from their little First Freedom. They've been coming to uh, different services yeah, and been great. to some of the concerts, and it's wonderful. It's wonderful to get to interact. And you know what? When we stand in front of uh, the Lord on that day, that great day, you're not going to have your membership card in your pocket. That's right. No. It's, it, what he's going to look for is the blood. Amen. Amen. Um, we've, um, some, when, when this all lifts, mm -hmm. one of my goals in life as a pastor is going to be doing more of that, is trying to get more churches um, regardless of the denomination. Yes. Regardless of the boundaries of the <clears throat> borders that we've we've put up, self-imposed. I say we. We. I. I feel like I'm trying to break them down as much as I can. But yes, uh, different churches have put up. Uh, I want to see us more joined together in a greater way. Uh, we've started doing that with First Freedom, and it's been an outstanding blessing for all of us involved. And we've Absolutely. been blessed with them. And and I want to see more of that kind of com camaraderie, fellowship, mm -hmm. love toward one another. Mm -hmm. Um, we had a winner. Right. Denise is so happy. Right. <laughs> we had a winner, and uh, but it was the right. It was probably in a different verse, but yeah, the answer was a train. Denise, would you mind enlightening them? In Isaiah six and one, I saw also the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train. Filled the temple. Amen. <laughs> so Vicky, Vicky Ferrier. Ferrier was the one who got the answer correct. That's Good job, right. Vicky. Congratulations, yeah. Vicky. <laughs> Good job, Vicky. I know there's a lot of answers the there. Answers. That was the one we was looking for, so we got to stick with what we was looking for. There was some good answers, though, caravans and different things. The cord was a good answer, but that's not quite what we was looking for. So. Helicopter was one. Um, Sadie Whirling says, uh, her, her text was, she says, I'm in tears listening to you, all of you. So very much enjoying listening. Touch my heart. And so Amen. we appreciate that, Sadie. Thank you for watching and listening. Um, Mom, Denise did not get the chocolate. So, um, <laughs> uh, so, so you can send her some, Mom, if you want to be her good mother-in-law, <laughs> you can send her some. Connie Gaylord, we do not have your address, so if you don't, excuse me, Connie Gaylord Reed, uh, would you mind sending us or private messaging us your address so we can make sure to send your CD to you as well. We'd appreciate that very much. Folks, it is a, it's a quarter after eight. I tell you, we just got started, and, and that's what happens every time. I'm yeah. sorry, but... Um, I've been blessed. I don't know about you out there, but I have been blessed. The Spirit of the Lord is thick here. The, what a wonderful Bible study we've had. That God's given us some great truths and mm. some, hopefully, some challenging truths for all of us that's listening. Uh, but we also have uh, some wonderful guests. And man, your testimonies and your, 
your, your conversion stories are just, both of them just were awesome. Amen. Which shows me that God is still on the throne. He's, he loves you. Yes, he And he's moved, he's moved heaven and earth so that you might be even here tonight. Amen. You see, I don't believe, the longer I live, I don't believe in accidents. Mm -mm. I used to think things just happened because they happened. I now believe with all my heart every step is designed by the hand of God. Amen. And uh, if you'll listen to the Lord, you'll acknowledge Him. I promise you, you'll trust Him. Yes. He will lead you Amen. in the right paths as well. Mm -hmm. uh, before we close, I want to, and, and don't turn me off just yet. <laughs> Watch, <laughs> just listen just for a minute because I got something really exciting. We have come up and with some help of some of our, our um, uh, Tim Fitzharris mm -hmm. has put a hand in, but he's kind of gotten the brain, the brain group here, I mm -hmm. guess you'd call it, or something other. But um, him and Lisa and I were discussing the other night uh, how we can do some things that's a little different, more interesting. Well, I don't know how you get much more interesting than the Word of God, but it, it, we're going to keep God's Word. We're going to keep the Bible study, the Bible trivia on Fridays, but we're going to change it up a little bit on Friday nights. I'm really excited about this. I'm excited for a couple of reasons. One is we're going to get there great Bible truths. We're going to do the Bible trivia, and we're going to be with you. But the biggest reason is because we're going to involve cooking into our little oh, show here. Be fun. And so cooking is going to be a big part of it. And I've, she didn't know it. She didn't volunteer. I kind of appointed her, but I, she agreed. But my wife is going to teach us all, if you want to know, if you want to know, she's going to teach us all how to make homemade gumbo. Now, I'm, this, is, oh, this recipe we are friends. is from all the way down from Louisiana. We had some friends, friends years ago, <laughs> years ago, they uh, taught her how to make this gumbo. And I'm telling you, they, they only gave me the recipe. I taught. I had to learn. Yes, <laughs> yes. They gave her the recipe, and she's learned. And I'm telling you, she's learned good. If you want to learn how to make, I mean, from scratch gumbo, how to make it all from start to finish, mm -hmm. um, you make sure you tune in on Friday evening at 7 p.m. Um, and we won't have the guests that this Friday because of it. But here's what we want to is is on Fridays, um, we're going to start doing some of that with the little cooking things. And, mm -hmm. and so I want you to please, if you've got something that you're, you can make and you want to be a part of the show or you want to be a part of the, the <laughs> festivities around here, um, <laughs> and you've got a good recipe. Now listen, the recipe can't be making macaroni and cheese and pouring it out of the box and following the dressing. <laughs> We really want, we, want, <laughs> we want something that's really going to bring home the, the, the sauce here. Now, the second reason I'm excited about Friday is not only is she going to make it, but I get to eat it. So that's the best part about it. I get to eat the gumbo. So we're going to have a taste test for this. But if you want to watch on Friday evening, we would love to have you at 7 o'clock. Make sure you are. T let other people know. <clears throat> and the way you can help us to help spread the gospel and just during this difficult time, this is a way of, of sharing with one another, interacting yes. with one another. Even if through your comments and things, mm -hmm. we're excited about this. So we want you to share this page, our web, our, our Facebook page. Share it. We want you to share it, share it, share it, and like it, like it, like it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Put tag people into it. You know, <laughs> just do what you can. Let people know what's going on so that they can be a part too. Listen, it's for everybody. So we want you to be a part of that. If you're watching by YouTube, Please make sure you subscribe to our page. That way it pops up when mm -hmm. we come on. Uh, I get a little announcement when we come on or different things go on. So please make sure you do that. Let everybody know because I hope and pray that it's going to be a blessing. And hopefully it will be an encouragement to everybody who watches. Mm -hmm. Mike and Kathy, we are so thankful that you guys come tonight. I appreciate you. I appreciate your lives, what you mean to us as a congregation, me as a pastor. You've been such a blessing. And man, tonight again, just... Uh, again, it just resonates with everybody. I think everybody's been blessed. I can see the, the hearts flying through the air as you're just talking, and, and it's a blessing to see what God's done in your lives. You know, you've done so much, don't quit. Keep going. Keep going on for the Lord. The mm -hmm. Lord's got great plans for you, and I can't wait to see them come to fruition mm -hmm. even in a greater way. Mm -hmm. You're a tremendous part of our congregation. congregation. We love you. We appreciate you. We're thankful that you're here tonight. We're so proud that you're watching this. 
we, we're not pretending to be professional anythings. We just love the Lord and we want to share the word with you. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to think of ingenious, <laughs> creative ways to doing that. And uh, we hope and pray that the Lord blesses you throughout this difficult time. I know it's hard sometimes being stuck at the house a lot and having to be cooped up. But I'm telling you what, this is a great time to get away with the Lord. <coughs> mm -hmm. Pray a lot. Be seeking the Lord. Be reading your word. Pray for others. Call on the phone. Encourage somebody. That will keep your mind busy and your heart busy and your spirit right with God. You don't, this is not a break. Just because we got a break from your job doesn't mean it's a break from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So make sure you stay in tune with God. We're going to dismiss with a word of prayer as we always do. And I'm going to ask Brother Mike if he don't mind <coughs> to lead us in prayer. Holy God, loving Father, we are so, so blessed to have been a small part of this uh, little meeting tonight. And Lord, to feel your presence here with us and to uh, reaffirm, Lord, uh, that uh, our desire is to serve you, yes, Father, and to reach out to a lost and dying world. And, and in some way, Lord, help us to be a blessing to those we come in contact with. We recognize and we acknowledge, Lord, that all that we have and all that we are, we owe to you, Father, because without you, Father, we would be, as Willis said, that empty shell. And we pray, our Father, that you would just uh, continue to keep your hand upon our nation and the people of this world, God, as we uh, continue to go through this event. We recognize, Lord, that this is of the enemy. We come before you tonight, Lord, confident that you hear our, our petitions and that you will minister to those that are in need. And, Father, that you will, as you have promised in your word, never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. But go with us even to the end of the age. And we uh, will not fail to bow our heads and give you all the praise. For it is in Jesus' name that we ask these things. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. You have a wonderful week.